Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. Today we're test driving the redesigned 2021 Honda Ridgeline pickup. This is a vehicle that's been around for a little while, but it's got a few important updates for 2021, some new packaging that's available. And so I'm gonna show it to you inside and out. We're gonna take it for a drive out here in the desert. And then I'm gonna tell you what I really think. All right, my friends, before we get out on the test drive, let's talk about what we've got here. The 2021 Honda Ridgeline Sport. This is the entry level for the Ridgeline line. And here we also have the added HPD appearance package. So that's why this thing has this really nice rugged look that we really haven't seen before with the Ridgeline. Now as tested, we're at just under $41,000, $40,000 and some change. The base sport starting out at about $37,000. Honda gave all ridge lines an updated styling treatment at the front end, new LED headlights, a new lower front bumper fascia that is a little bit more rugged than before, also including standard LED fog lights. All grills are redesigned on the ridge line, but this has its own special grill with the HPD package that's even more rugged, even more off-roady looking. As we come around the corner, you can see this also has black fender flares, front and rear. And when you add that to these very handsome looking 18 inch bronze colored alloys, along with tires that are now a little bit more off-road mud, snow, um, well, they're chewy looking. They're not the old car tires we used to expect on the Ridgeline. I really think the styling updates and elements that you see right here in this picture go a long way to beefing up the truckness of the Ridgeline. Coming down the side and to the rear three quarter view, a few things I wanna point out. Right here you can see a seam, a nice visual break from the bed to the cab. And while the bed is not a separate structure, they've actually hung a separate piece of metal here that does allow some body flex since this is a unibody vehicle without wrinkling or stressing the body panels between the two cab and the box. Part of the HPD package, of course, are the graphics that you can see right there. Honda Performance Development on the back looks very, very nice, especially with some of the other colors, red, black, and so forth. At the rear, you can see something they've actually added for 2021 on all ridge lines, and that is the dual exhaust tips. Now, I like dual exhaust tips, especially on a truck. That's something that a lot of trucks are offering now. That really does sort of beef up the truck cred here, making it a little less car-like. I wouldn't be a very good reviewer if I didn't point out a few things here with the cargo box on the Ridgeline. Now, this does have a traditional tailgate, just like any other truck. Now, I will point out this does not have the soft open feature like a lot of trucks do have, but it does have a few other things going for it. First of all, this is a composite lined box, which means plastic, right? So you don't have to buy a bed liner. Um, even though this doesn't have the traditional type of soft open, this does have a few other things going for it. This bed can actually also open like that. Now, why? Why would you have a bed that opens two different ways? The main reason is because now I can get in closer to use this trunk. Now this is a lockable trunk. You can use it with the key fob as well as the standard key. And look how deep that is. That's actually large enough to store a lot of gear in there and it's lockable. So you can have lockable storage here in your bed without having to go to a tonneau cover. The spare tire is also in there. But one other thing to point out here is this is great to use as an ice chest out in your camping excursions. It's drainable and I've seen it done where this thing is just full of ice and drinks. It's an awesome thing. One of the reasons I love it when they give me a base model vehicle is because I actually get to see the trim, the seat materials, uh, the general quality of a vehicle without all of the extra masking like leather and maybe upgraded trim on the dash and things like that. I get to see what the majority of sales out there actually look like and feel like. And because this is a Honda, not disappointed. Honda builds some of the best interiors in the business no matter what the price in terms of quality, fit and finish, and overall comfort. That's just been my experience and if you read any reviews on Hondas that tends to be what people come up with. Looking at the dash, because we're in the sport, this has a patterned plastic that looks sort of like metal and that carries down into the console. Even though this is the base model, feature content is pretty impressive. There's climate control in the center and an 8-inch touchscreen at the top. These seats are manually controlled, both passenger and the driver, and they have this very handsome cloth. It's very sturdy, 
It actually looks fashionable, dare I say it. Another thing I like about these seats is they have fold-down armrests that sort of picks up the fact that I don't have a really tall console here. It's just a nice, comfortable position to lay your arms as you're making long trips or just driving around town. These seats are exceptionally comfortable, as I've come to expect from Honda. They have good side support. They're firm, but they're comfortable nonetheless. They're not over-cushioned, and the position is just right. Looking forward, the instrument cluster is a two-dial setup with two separate screens in the center, color digital information screens that you can program for whatever you want. The steering wheel itself has paddle shifters. Those control the nine-speed automatic transmission and a full suite of controls on the steering wheel. Very high quality in terms of switch gear, and that can be said throughout this interior. The center console is very simply laid out. There's a nice storage area down at the bottom for your phone and a cubby in the center of the center stack down on the middle of the console, the gear selector. Now this has a push button gear selector, not my favorite, but we're in a truck, so I tend not to be as um, well, upset about it as I would be if this were a performance car. What's very cool about this is the center console storage. This actually has a roll top, and when you open that, you've got a huge deep bin down here. There's actually room for about four, maybe even five Kleenex boxes, and down on the bottom are plenty of auxiliary power ports. Just like the last time I tested over the Ridgeline, I find that this rear seat area does have a nice high seating position. You can see that. My legs aren't perched up. And the same can't be said for almost anything this competes with. A Toyota Ford and Chevrolet midsize trucks, so you do sit lower and it's a little bit more of a cramped space back here. My leg room is pretty good as you can see. These seats are set for my height about 5'8", 5'9", depending on whether I'm wearing boots or sneakers. Uh, if I had a six footer up here, seat might be back a little further my knees might be up against that seat. Now, comfort is the thing we need to talk about here. This is a pretty flat, firm seat, not a lot of side support, not a lot of holding you going on here. Um, while it's not an unnatural position, it's not the most comfortable in either. Now, these seats, they do fold up in a 60-40 split, allowing you to put big, tall boxes and other gear back here, maybe a television from the big box store, something like that. And we do have a fold-down center armrest in the center. Amenities? There are AC vents back here, which is very helpful on a day like today when it's 108 degrees, but there are no power ports back here. Now, this is a base model. However, we are getting to a point in the car market five years after this was introduced that uh, that's getting to be expected, even in the lesser priced models. When it comes to rating this interior, I'm very impressed overall. It's a place that I have found comfortable, I found of high quality, and there's a lot of versatility going on here. This is a good place to start if this is base grade. This interior gets four and a half out of five stars. The infotainment system here is an eight inch touchscreen that has near full functionality. There's a backup camera, but not a 360 degree camera, but at this price, not expected. There's AM, FM, Bluetooth connectivity, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. Now, the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto here is something that you do still have to connect up to, not wireless at the moment. One of the things I love that they've done is they've actually added a volume knob this year. It's something new, yeah. We complained about it before. They used to have sort of a, a touchpad thing here. The volume knob is so much better, makes me happier. Now all we need to do is add a tuning knob. Thank you, Honda. Be looking forward to that. Um, overall, though, for a base system, this is pretty good. Visuals, graphics, ease of use of the menus, top of the line. Visibility sometimes is hampered because we don't have full shrouding from the sun, but overall, this infotainment system gets four and a half out of five stars. All right, my friends, I promised you a drive in the desert, so we're gonna start right out here in the desert on my favorite trail. And I think it's important to really take this truck out here and ring it out a little bit because one of the biggest criticisms I've heard of the Ridgeline since it came out is that it's not a real truck, right? It doesn't have a truck frame. This is a car, this is a crossover. And while there is some validity to those factual statements, what really needs to be pointed out is this thing is actually built pretty tough. Out here on this trail, this thing feels every bit as solid as the Toyota Tacoma Trail that I recently tested out here. Isolation over some of these rough bumps and rocks, things like that, uh, it's very good. The suspension isn't bottoming out. I'm not feeling crashing or any kind of structural 
weakness that makes me feel like this thing isn't tough like a truck. Well, the trail is a great place to see how maneuverable this is and, well, how tough it is over the rough stuff. The desert washboard road is really the place I like to test any truck or crossover or SUV vehicle because it, it tells me how well built this thing is. How does it handle this rhythmic vibration of the washboard surface? Does it rattle? Does it squeak? Does it shake? Do I get any shuddering in the front suspension, the steering? And the answer to that question here in the ridge line is no. This is actually feeling every bit as solid and well put together as some of the more expensive off-road SUVs that I've brought out here, Jeeps, trucks, other vehicles. And the difference is because of the chassis tuning and this, this wonderfully balanced steering, this thing's actually fun to toss around out here. I'm actually going quite a bit faster than I normally would in a lot of vehicles because this thing is just it's so predictable and so tossable. This is a vehicle that just feels very well composed on rougher surfaces like this, so it definitely passes the washboard road test. Now, while I say the most important place I can test a truck is off the pavement, the reality is this truck is probably going to spend most of its life on the pavement. Here's where I think this truck really does set itself apart from all of the other body on frame trucks that are out there. This thing really does hold its own off-road, in the dirt, in the places you expect a truck to do well. But because the Ridgeline is a unibody constructed truck with a fully independent suspension, it gives you the driving manners, the poise, the overall handling characteristics of a car or a crossover SUV when it comes to everyday life out here in the real world. And so around town, it tends to be smoother and it feels more solid, more refined. And at speed out here on the road, it's actually pretty quiet. Very little, if any, wind noise. A lot of trucks tend to have wind noise. So when it comes to handling, I'm very impressed. This is fun to drive. It's solid, it's refined, it's all the stuff you expect in some of the better sedans and SUVs out there, only it has a truck capability. Chassis gets four and a half out of five stars. Since the first time I drove the Ridgeline five years ago, a few things have changed, but a few things remain the same. What's changed? All-wheel drive is now standard, and the nine-speed automatic transmission that was one of the transmissions available is now the standard transmission. So we have a nine-speed, all-wheel drive, what hasn't changed is the 3.5 liter V6 underhood single overhead cam. It has 280 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque. So the question I always like to ask is how does it go when we come to a complete stop? Nobody around? And here we go. Not bad. And 60. It has decent punch. It has a pretty nice sound too. The transmission, even though this nine speed transmission hasn't always been my favorite in the past, they've done a lot of work to this, to refine it, to make it work better. And I really don't have the complaints about it that I did five, 10 years ago when they first started showing up on the market. It shifts and behaves well, that's important. Now this engine does get a little bit noisy under load, but for the most part around town, it's very quiet and very refined. Fuel efficiency, it's rated at 18 city, 24 highway, and 21 combined. Now that's the one thing that we didn't quite get up to standard this week. In my week with it, I got 17 MPG, but I do give a little bit of deference to the fact that the AC was on all the time and that the auto start stop didn't engage because it was so hot. Overall, I'm very impressed with this powertrain. It's refined, it's quiet, it behaves, it has power when you want it, and all-wheel drive standard, you don't get that in any of the competitors out there. So powertrain comes in at four out of five stars. All right, my friends, the last thing that we have to talk about is value. How do we put a value score on this vehicle, especially given the fact that there aren't any competitors? You look at the new Ford Maverick, the Hyundai Santa Cruz, new crossover pickup trucks coming on the market soon. Those are a lot smaller, not really the same thing. They're a lot less expensive as well. This is a midsize truck you might compare to the Ford Ranger, the Chevrolet Colorado, or the Toyota Tacoma. Those are completely different animals. Body on frame trucks, they drive differently, they live differently, 
and they're just not the same. This is really a vehicle that marches to its own drummer and thus very hard to compare directly with anything. But looking at the price, $37,000 base price, um, you know, this comes standard with some of the things as midsize trucks charge X to 4, V6, all wheel drive, and a number of features inside as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's a higher entry point. That's the basic line here. If you're looking for a value proposition, this is probably not it. When we look at options pricing, $2,800 and some change for the HPD package, I think that's fair. And you know, $400 for sparkly white paint, eh, mm, that's just a way for them to make money off of somebody who just wants a white truck, I think. That said, I still put value at four and a half out of five stars. When you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we're at four and a half stars for the review. And you know what else? I like it. I like it well enough that I would buy it. If I were in the midsize truck segment, I would probably choose this over the Ford Ranger, Chevrolet Colorado, and even the Toyota Tacoma. And the reason why is because we've got Honda quality. This thing drives absolutely wonderful. It's comfortable, especially around town. And it doesn't do too badly out here in the wild either. So I'm just very impressed. And it's a vehicle I've just, I've just really enjoyed driving this week. So yeah, I would totally buy this. There you go. If you like the video you just saw, click right there, see my latest one, or better yet, click down there and stay tuned.